you won't go wrong with this particular bread recipe because it hasn't disappointed me and I'm certain it will not disappoint you. And interestingly, we are working with very basic bread ingredients that are most likely available where you are. And thankfully, we are working on it without an oven and on your gas stove or cooker. And that makes it very convenient for you to make bread without an oven. So join me as we work on this particular recipe and I'm certain you will enjoy it as we are enjoying it here. Welcome to Recipes and Hospitality with Clara. This is a channel where we share recipes that are simple, easy to do at home with ingredients toned down just like this one to enhance your hospitality for the glory of God. And if you're new here and this is the kind of content you like, kindly consider subscribing, hit the notification bell. You'll be notified every time I upload new content. I upload this kind of content that is very simple and like I said, ingredients are most likely available where you are or even in your pantry. As is always our custom on this channel, we will pray and trust the Lord to grant us a fruitful time as we work on this recipe. Indeed, we pray that Father, you will be with me, you will be with my viewer. I pray that you will be glorified as we work on this recipe because we are trusting you for creativity and that everything we do in the kitchen will serve you. Help us, O oh God, and be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. In a suitable bowl, begin by mixing the three-quarter teaspoon of yeast together with half a teaspoon of the sugar and some of the water. Remember the water that is warm in the ingredients. Mix this until well mixed and then set aside to allow this mixture to prove for about five to ten minutes because we want to make sure that our yeast is good. It's not dead, but it is alive and therefore will cause our bread to proof. So set aside and allow the 10, 5 to 10 minutes. Um, mine I know will take a little longer, probably the 10 minutes because as we are doing this, this is early morning and I live in an area of our country that gets really cold in the morning. And so I know it will take a little more time to proof, about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, as we wait, I will mix my dry ingredients. That's the salt, a quarter teaspoon together with two tablespoons of sugar and one cup of all purpose and one cup of butter. You can use all purpose or all atta, but I love to mix this uh, atta, one cup and atta and all purpose one cup because I find that ratio really makes the bread come out really nicely. You can see this is 10 minutes later and our yeast is good to go. It's formed bubbles. If it doesn't, then you probably need fresh yeast because that means the yeast is dead and it will not do the work of proofing our dough. I'll go ahead and add in my three tablespoons of salad oil and mix well. And then I'll begin to mix in the dry ingredients. I'll use half of the dry ingredients and mix with my wooden spoon. Once I've mixed, I will add in the rest of the dry ingredients and mix this time. I will knead actually with my hands until all the ingredients are well kneaded and I'll keep doing this as I add in the remaining warm water and knead to a soft dough as you will see because you will need about three quarter cup, cups of, three quarter cup of water in total. Maybe a little more or a little less but it should be about three quarter cup to come to that mixture that you will see that is just soft it's not too hard and not too soft it's just soft enough so i've kneaded all the ingredients until they are mixed but i will continue my kneading on the surface for about three to five minutes I know this allows the gluten to work really well so that at the end I will have bread that is soft and texture is really good. As you will see at the end when we are done with baking our bread. So knead well for about three to five minutes.
I will shape into a bowl shape as you will see and then return it in the bowl that I used. You can as well use another bowl but I think in the kitchen you want to reduce dirty dishes as much as possible and because our bowl is still okay I will return it back in and then I will go ahead and uh, apply some little salad oil on the surface to keep it soft and supple so that it doesn't dry out. Once I have done this I will cover it with a clean kitchen towel and place in a warm place in the kitchen to prove or cover with clean film if you also have clean film but like I mentioned I'm doing this very early in the morning and it's a bit cold so I'm going to create a microclimate that I like to do as you know on this channel that water that I'm using is hot but not too hot because I can uh, use my finger to taste so I will just use another kitchen towel I've doubled it so that uh, the heat is not in direct contact with the yeast to cause it to to burn before it proves our dough so that's why I've doubled and covered it and then placed my container on top because I just need the warmth of the water to cause my dough to proof really nicely and we will do this for about 45 minutes to an hour meanwhile i am greasing my pan i'm using a pan that's fairly heavy now that we are not baking without an oven we are so that our bread will not burn before it's ready so the pan is fairly heavy as you can see and I have gone ahead and greased it with about a teaspoon of marge of fat you can also use fat and then I've gone ahead and dusted it with a little flour this is about an hour later let's look at our dough you can see it has proved really nicely it's doubled in size we will now go ahead and beat it down and then we will knead it some more at least for about three or so minutes and then our dough will be ready to go When you've beaten it, you can also give it another rice for about 45 minutes. But I know in the home, we don't have all that time. So I'm just going to allow it to proof that once for a longer time. And then I will proof it now for about 20 minutes as you will see. So I will give it another knead for a few more minutes and then we will continue. And this time, as you can see, it's really relaxed, so we may not need to add flour on the surface. It will actually work without flour and it's not really sticky at this point. So again, I will shape it once I have kneaded it and then it will be ready to, to go into our greased pan. It's a pan that it's just fit enough to fit our two cup uh, bread dough. That means the dough is slightly below the half mark of the pan because that means it has space to proof and therefore to rise when we are baking our dough. So I'm using the back of my fingers to stretch it out so that it can cover the bottom of the pan as you can see. Once it's done so, I will go ahead again and cover with my clean kitchen towel and place it in a warm place in the kitchen to proof for about 20 minutes. But again, because it's still cold, though the sun is rising at this point, I will still return it on my microclimate and allow it to proof for about 20 minutes because the water is still warm. This is about 20 minutes later. You can see it has proved. Now we will cover with our lid and transfer it to our gas stove or gas cooker. Because we are doing this no bake. So we will allow it on full flame for about 20 to 30 seconds just to heat up the pan. Not too long a time. Then we will go ahead and reduce it. Not that way. The natural way your gas cooker has been designed to get to its lowest by your manufacturer because that's still too high. That's why you've seen I've taken it back 
up and then I'll go ahead and reduce it as though I'm switching it off and get it to that very low flame. The kind that if you blew really hard on it, it can go off. That's the kind that will bake your bread for about 40 minutes. But because our gas cookers are different, we will start checking on it from about 35 minutes but for my for me for my gas cooker 40 minutes was good enough and actually as we are checking you can see that's 40 minutes and it's ready so I will use two lids to flip it over because you can see it's ready but the top part is still cream <laughs> Uh, like our dough was so we want it to brown as well so we need to flip it using two lids so that we can get that white part on top and then we can slide our pan back over our bread so that we can get it on the bottom of the pan so that it can brown also on that side as you can see me do So I hope you can see how I have done it. Then once it's back in the pan, we will give it about 10 minutes because it's really cooked. We will allow it just 10 minutes and then it will brown on that side and I'll show you how it looks. Yeah, that's how it has browned after 10 minutes you can see it's ready actually it's hot and good to go and while it is still hot I will take some merge in my hands I've washed my hands they are clean and then I will apply it onto the bread to keep it soft and supple so that it doesn't the crust really doesn't dry out and then we are good to go but we will allow it about 10 or so minutes so that it can cool down and then you will see how it looks on the inside so that's how our bread looks looked very nice and I can assure you it tasted really really nice like I told you my ratio I love this ratio of how I do my bread even without milk without egg of course if you want it to be more nutritious you can add those but this is the basic bread recipe that you can use and I can tell you you will not go wrong with this one So that's how it looks. You can see it's really spongy and bouncy and delightful. And once it cools down completely, you are going to love it. As you will see once I've cut it up and sliced it up. But you can see how it looks. Wow, very nice, very soft, very spongy on the inside. And when we cut it up for breakfast, that's how it looked. So that's my very basic recipe as I promised as you can see the ingredients are most likely available we enjoyed that particular bread recipe a great deal and I'm certain when you try it you will enjoy it please try it and share in the comments let me know how it went for you because I know it went well and especially when you're sure your yeast is good and fresh you can check out this bread recipe right here i did it on a jiko but it's also very simple and richer because i've added milk i've added egg you could check this one out again very balanced and you're going to love it as well because that's my other go-to recipe when i am doing my bread recipes so thank you so much for joining me see you in that next video of this next video